the seventeenth chapter of St. Luke is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men. Pandemic board game in review. What better time to review this than in the middle of a pandemic, right? So we've got one raging on outside. If you listen closely, you can hear it. Actually, what you're hearing is nothing because there's nobody outside. Actually, there's, nobody's doing anything. So uh, pretty good time to take a look at this game. It's quite popular. It's been around since 2008. Uh, it's a game for two to four players, but realistically, you can play this by yourself. It's a co-op game and uh, we'll get around to you know, actually one, one of one of the, the, the problems that can come up with this game because it's a co-op is that it, it can wind up being played by one person even if there's four people sitting around the table but but anyways other than that it's it's a co-op game for two to four players um, and it doesn't take very long to play you have a very short list of actions but basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to find cures for four different diseases that are uh, rampaging across the planet and those are represented by these uh, these little colorful uh, plastic cubes. You've got blue, black, yellow, and, and red. Um, so basically how the game operates is that you would uh, decide your number of players. Each player would then take uh, randomly, or I mean, you, you could always choose them, but it's more fun to go random. Uh, these rolls, there are seven that come in the, in the base game. Uh, you have, uh, you know, I've drawn out uh, three for three players here we have the operations expert the scientist and the medic each one of these roles will grant you a special ability for example the operations expert as an action can build a research station in the city you are in uh, with no city card required or once per turn as an action move from a research station to any city by discarding a city card so each one of them the uh, scientists let you build uh, you know, sorry you only need four cards of the same color to do discover a cure action, right? So each one of them are very handy. Uh, so you're going to choose one, you'll take the appropriate colored pawn over here. Uh, and what you do is you start out in Atlanta where the Center for Disease Control is and you'll put one of these uh, fancy little research stations that are represented by these wooden kind of uh, houses or whatnot. Um, and then after you'll, you'll go about the business of seating the decks and seating the boards. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to take care of the two decks of cards in the game. One of them is the infection deck over here, these green cards, and then you'll also have to decide, you know, how difficult you want the game to be and choose that many epidemic cards. Uh, for purposes of, of this example, I've chosen four. That's the way you would do it if you were just starting out, or you can go with five, which is a standard game, or the heroic or hard, which would be six of these cards. So what you do is you would take those, uh, and then put equal amounts of the city cards in stacks, shuffle them in, and then put those stacks together, and then you put them over here. And this is the, the deck that the players would draw upon. Each of the players would start with four cards, and you can never have more than seven of these you have to draw down if, if you find yourself in that situation. But the infection deck, this one you shuffle it up, and then what you do is you start to seed the board with the various diseases. What you do is you draw three cards. The first three will tell you where to put three cubes of that color, and you, you basically put them all around. Then after you would draw three more, and then you would put two cubes, and then three more, and put one cube. So this is the starting situation around the world where the various breakouts are happening and, and so forth. So if you ever have a situation where there are uh, three cubes, uh, that's pretty much maximum, you know, disease capacity that any city can can undertake, right? So what the players are trying to do is take their actions and you have this card here that tells you, you know, what the different actions are that you can do. You can do any number of them any number of times, but every player can only do four actions. They can also do their special ability and there are also a few event cards in the city deck and those provide you with, with actions as well. So some of them build a research station. This allows you to travel between research stations, uh, treat disease, remove one disease cube from the city you are in, unless of course you're the medic, you can remove all of them. Um, share knowledge, you can uh, give, the, give a card, a city card that matches the city you are in to another player or take that card from another player in that city, right? And I'll get to the reason why those are, are important in a second, discover a cure at any research station discard five city cards of the same disease color to cure the disease and then what you do is you take this this little little bottle here of the matching color and you place it on the track matching the disease to show that there's a cure if ever you've you've 
removed all of the cubes of a cured disease from the board, you then flip it over to its eradicated side with the, with the circle and a symbol and it's done. That's not necessary to win, you just need to find cures. So once you have the cure, diseases can still break out, but it becomes easier to remove them with, with the, uh, with the uh, treat disease action because you can remove all of the cubes from a city as opposed to just one. Uh, you can drive or ferry that's moved from one city to another along any one of these lines. A direct flight, discard a city card to move to the city named on that card. So you would have to, you know, to take the city card that matches whatever you're in. Uh, charter a flight, discard the city card that matches the city you are in to move to any other city. Sorry, I got those a little bit backwards. Shuttle flight, move from a city with a research station to another city that has a research station. So those are your actions. You're going to be... Uh, working together to try to scurry around the board and prevent outbreaks. So what happens is at the end of your turn, basically the turn sequence is you take your actions, uh, then after you, you do the infection step and you take two cards or a number of cards based on the infection rate that's listed on the board here. So to start the game, it's two. So what you do is you take two of these cards, you flip them over and you put, you put a disease uh, you know, token in the city that matches the card. Now, if ever you wind up in a situation where you have to put uh, one of these disease cubes in a city that already has three, you then have an outbreak. What you do is you move the outbreak token here down the list, and if this ever gets to the skull and crossbones, it's game over. If there are, if there are not enough uh, cards to draw on in the, in the city deck, the player deck, uh, then it's game over as well, right? So you do your actions, you do the infection step, uh, you handle any outbreaks and, and, and again how that works is that instead of putting a, a cube, a disease cube in the city because it already has three, it spreads out. So every city that it's attached to gets a disease cube. So that's considered an outbreak. Uh, if any of those cities are also loaded up with three cubes, they in turn outbreak as well. You move the outbreak marker back, but it doesn't cause one back to the city that, that caused it to, to have this outbreak, right? So there's no bouncing back and forth to, to have unlimited outbreaks, right? So things can get out of hand really fast. This game is very unforgiving. Um, if you don't get a handle on things, it, it you, you can find yourself behind the eight ball pretty quick. Um, but it, on the other side, you can, if you manage it, you know, well, and you get the right cards at the beginning, you can, you can wind up, you know, winning quite easily too. So you have those two sides and everything in the middle, which would tell you that the game is pretty fairly balanced. It, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I found it to be quite a bit of fun, um, you know, matching up the different, uh, you know, the different roles and trying to, to uh, you know, manage your deck of cards and, and to find uh, cures for these diseases and, and running around the globe trying to take care of things. And you really feel that sense of pressure and, and, uh, and, and, and tension when you have outbreaks going on because what will happen is um, once you have, uh, and if you draw one of these epidemic cards, okay, now these are seeded into the player's deck, there's the four of them in here, what you do is you increase the infection rate, right, so this moves up one, so this is the, the end game timer that you're watching out for too, and in, in addition to the outbreaks, then you infect, draw the bottom card from the infection deck, and put three cubes on that city, right, so you're taking the bottom cube from, from the infection deck, you, you're, you're seeding that city with uh, three disease cubes and then you're putting that card on top of the discard pile right and then you have the intensify uh, portion you shuffle uh, the cards in the infection discard pile and then put them on top of the infection deck so now what's going to happen is cities that you know have already been infected uh, to start the game off and throughout the game are now put back on top so unless you've been you know, very, uh, very good about removing all of these diseases and, and, uh, and, and taking care of them, they're right back on the top and they're the first ones that are going to be seeded with disease cubes once again. So the pressure ramps up. There are four in this version. There are five in the standard version. Um, and, and they can show up sometimes back to back depending on how the shuffle goes, right? So the, the, the tension really ramps up, so it, it's a bit of a timer on the game so that the game doesn't take forever, um, you know, but it, it can be pretty quick, right? Ultimately, you have the last say on what to do on your turn, but with, as with any co-op, the game does and can suffer from, you know, the, the, the boss player, the one who's looking and saying, no, you shouldn't do that, you should do this, 
oh, you should do this and you should do that. And it winds up, it can devolve into a, into a single player game sometimes if, you know, if, if, if that's the way it goes. So it's really dependent on your play group. Are you there to have fun? Well, how much fun? Who, who's, you know, how much attention are people really paying to, you know, the card draws and whatnot? Um, it's, it's good with kids. Um, you can, you know, have a lot of fun with them to, you know, in, in playing this game and, 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 and teaching them, you know, how to look out for things and what to do and whatnot. But I mean, don't play it for them, right? So it can, it can suffer that. A lot of co-op games do suffer from this, but this one more than a lot that, that I know of, uh, because it doesn't have dice, there's randomness in the cards, uh, but, but dice kind of, you know, make up for, for a bit of that, you know, leader um, bossing around everybody in a co-op game thing, but whatever, it's, it's, it's fun enough and light enough that you can get a few rounds in in a night. So for example, the operations expert here can, uh, as one of his actions, he can drive to Washington. Uh, then after, by discarding that card, goes in the discard pile, uh, and then choose, because he did that, he could fly to uh, Cairo, uh, build a research station there, and follow up by curing one cube. So there's four actions that he took, and then he would draw up two cards and then do the infection phase. And of course, if you were to draw an epidemic card, you do the epidemic step. Uh, event cards can be played as well if they're drawn from this deck. And that's pretty much it. You just, you go around until you find cures or either one of these, these two tracks or this deck of cards runs out and then it's game over, right? So anyways, that's it. It's a simple game. Uh, it's It's got a lot of traction. There's a ton of expansions for it. There are, there are other iterations of the game. There are some legacy versions that, that by all accounts are a lot of fun. I would probably suggest those. Everything I've heard about them are, are really good. Uh, but the vanilla game is great for, you know, for beginners. It's kind of like a, you know, an entry level board game for people, or it's good if you have guests coming over because it's so simple. Uh, but yet it does have that tension. It's got the outbreaks and the, and the infection rates and, and just putting the, the, the discard uh, infection cards back on top really, really adds a lot of heat and tension, right? So, so, there you go. I think there's a lot of variability. It's uh, it's a decent little game. You know, it's not uh, it's not going to knock anybody anybody over with complexity. And uh, and I think you can uh, you can have fun with this. Uh, you know, in a good game night, beer and pretzel type situation, right? So, pandemic. Uh, have at it during the pandemic. The